It is good to praise you, Lord, and make music to your name, O Most High. It is good to praise you, Lord, and make music to your name, O Most High. to welcome you to our service today whether you're here with us for the first time or whether you're a seasoned old hand it's lovely to welcome you as we meet together to worship God today and as part of our worship today we're looking at harvest uh, in our service uh, today we're going to use bits from our church harvest thanksgiving service in Mumwell and um, I should say that uh, all our harvest offerings here in Mumwell uh, they go to Sheffield Cathedral. Sheffield Cathedral run what they call the Archer Project, which is a work amongst homeless people in the city of Sheffield. So that's where we've sent all our various harvest offerings. 
But um, as we meet together, as we come together for worship, um, first of all, we want to just spend just a moment as we come into God's presence together. And, uh, harvest time, we remember God's goodness towards us, God's generosity towards us. But actually, we also need to remember the number of times when we actually we, we actually turn away from God and we turn away from his goodness and his generosity. So we're going to spend just a moment or two as we come to God, as we ask for his forgiveness. So let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear these words of absolution. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to come to a bit of scene setting. Uh, Louise is going to set the scene for us as we think about our harvest theme. And then after that, Helen will come and read the passage to us. Perhaps I have never seen such fine specimens. It's dead. Oh, how dare you? Look, look at these. I've had some love and care. Look at this beautiful sunflower. Have you ever seen such a beautiful sunflower? <laughs> they are beautiful. Been thinking about plants and what a plant needs to grow. Throw some ideas at me. What do we need to give plants to grow, Isaac? Water and sun. Water, sunlight, anything else it might want? Yes, Ken? Compost, yeah, they might need feeding. Thinking about watering them, how do they drink the water? Canaan, Paddock, with the roots. Well, you can't see down there, but I've got here an awful you look. Look at the roots on that. You need to come down and have a look at some point. The roots on that, the root system is amazing. Oh, apparently it's safe for me to take it out. Oh, can you even see that? Look at the roots, they're coming out the bottom, they're that good. Really strong roots on that plant to take in the water. I think somebody needs to give these plants a bit more water. This one's not so bad, but these, these definitely need a big drink. Are you allowed to sit? Pardon? Mother. <laughs> we're going to be looking at our reading next and we're going to be talking about roots in our reading. Today's Bible reading is from Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 to 8. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. This is the word of the Lord.
So you can think about our reading as a tale of two trees. And as we come to think a little bit more about that passage, uh, that's what we're going to call, that's what I'm going to call the sermon this morning, a tale of two trees as we think a little bit more about God. Or as you'll see, uh, maybe I should have called the sermon a tale of two plants. But either way, uh, the, uh, we've got to think about some pretty important truths about God that we can think about at this harvest time. We want to think about what those trees, what the passage from Jeremiah has to teach us about God. And it's a bit like this. Can I have my next slide, Cameron? Um, the Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God created a perfect world. A world without disease, without suffering, without pain. And he created you and me as human beings in his image. He created us for a relationship with himself. Uh, can I have my next slide please? And the Bible says this, it says, Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, you are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created, and have their being. God has given us a life. Uh, he's created us for a relationship in himself. But sadly, next one, <laughs> uh, sadly, that's not how it is today. Uh, sadly, we don't live in that world anymore because each one of us has turned away from God. We've said to God, thanks very much, but no thanks. I'm sorry, God, I'm going my own way, forget you. That's what we say as human beings, each one of us. And the sad part of that is that we die. Uh, we become separated from God. Separated from God in this world, but also even more tragically, separated from God in the world that is to come. That's what Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, just as people are destined to die once, and after that, to face the judgment of God. Now that sounds bad, and indeed it is bad, it's very hard, but the good news is this, that God loves us, and that God has done something about it. He's done something about the fact that we are separated from him by our sin. And this is what God has done, this is how we know that God loves us. Next slide please. God loves us, we know that, because Jesus into the world to be our saviour. God sent his one and only son to be our saviour. And when he died on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. When he died on the cross, he did for us what we can't do for ourselves. Next, next slide please. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. Jesus has done for you what you can't do for yourself. One way to think about sin is to think about sin as a debt. It's like a big debt that you can't pay. But Jesus can't pay, and he has paid for your sin. He paid for your sin when he died for you on the cross. But of course Jesus didn't just stay dead. Next, next slide please. Three days later Jesus was raised to new life. The resurrection. Jesus is alive. He's not in the tomb anymore. He's not dead. He's alive. And the resurrection means this. The resurrection means first of all Jesus is who he said he is. He is the Son of God. Because everybody else who born, you live, you die, and that's your lot. The only exception to that has been Jesus of Nazareth, because he is the Son of God. Second thing that the resurrection means, it means that Jesus has paid the price for our sin. We are free. God has forgiven us. And the third thing that the resurrection means is that death is not the end. We are whole as Christians. Death is not the end. 
because we will go to be with the one who knows us and who loves us the best. Next slide, please. This is what the, the New Testament says. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What a wonderful hope we have as Christians. Um, this world is not all that there is. Death does not have to be the end. There is life for us in Jesus Christ. That's what God has done for us. That's how much he loves us. Can I have a next slide, please? If that's what God has done for us, then we've got a choice. Uh, it's like these two trees. Which one of them is us? It's like these two plants. Which one of them is us? Well, this one, this one that looks as though it's on the way out, this one is like this guy here with the crown over his head. This one is saying, God, forget it. Thanks, God, but no thanks. I'm going. I've had enough. Well, that guy on, the, on my left is heading for that. That's where he's going. That's, where, that's the journey that he's on. He's on the road that leads to destruction. And that's one choice we can make as human beings. The other choice we can make as human beings is this guy on the right, with the crown with Jerry on. This man has said, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. Thank you that you died on the cross for me. Thank you that you were raised again for me. Thank you for the new life you bring to me. This person, is that tree. This person are these flowers. That person, the one with the, on the right hand side with the J crown with the J on, he is on the path that leads to life. Because in the end, as human beings, there are only two ways to live. Those are your two options. A pathway that rejects God and Jesus and leads to that, or the pathway that says, thank you, Jesus, thank you, God, and leads to that. Can I have my last slide, please? And the Bible puts it in these terms, John chapter 3, verse 36, the one who believes in the Son, the one who said, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done, has eternal life. The one who rejects the Son, that's like this one here, the one who says, thanks, but no thanks, he will not see life. God's wrath rests on. So, can you just go back up one? Which one's you? Who are you? In these two options, who are you? Which one's you? That's the choice that we have as human beings. You can say, thank you to God for what you've done for me, or thanks, but no thanks. Path of leads to life, or the path of leads to destruction. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you for what you've done for us. We come to you now. We, we recognise that actually we are not perfect. But we've all fallen short. We've all walked away. Thank you that you died. You gave your son to die for us. Thank you for the new life that he brings to us. And help us to make that choice today. To follow him. And we ask it all in his name. In our sermon, we've thought about some of the foundational truths of the Christian faith. And so as we think about those things, about who God is, about what God has done for us, especially what he's done for us in the person of Jesus Christ, we can now say together the words of the creed. So shall we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we come to our intercessions and our prayers will be led for us by Anne. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to remember that you are the root of our faith. Help us to flourish in your word. Help those whose roots are not in you, and that they may be open to your word. Thank you that in these strange and difficult times, you are our strength, our food to feed us. And we are more like the bush in the wasteland. Lord, we pray for all who are affected by COVID-19, the ones who have the virus in their families, and the ones who are treating the sick. We pray for their strength to get through this. We pray that you will give the scientists the strength and wisdom to find a vaccine, to cure, not to eradicate the COVID-19 virus. We pray for all who are finding it difficult because they have lost their jobs, their businesses and their livelihoods. And we pray for those suffering from mental health problems. And the virus has made worse. Help them to take their strength from you. Let them be more like the tree planted by the water, sending out its roots to become stronger in you. Help us to find you who it is like the water, strengthening us more and more each day. We pray for all who cannot be with us here today for whatever reason. Lord, be with them in their time of need. We pray for the world, the leaders, those making these very difficult decisions that they will think of you in their decisions and do what is right for everyone. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we close our prayers by saying together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And just to say to you by way of notices, uh, as ever on Thursday, we'll be having our Zoom prayer meeting. So if you'd like to be part of that, please drop me an email before. Well, I used to send them out sort of late Thursday afternoon. So anytime before then, send me an email and I can send you the access codes. Uh, John Gordon Armstrong1964 at gmail.com. And also to say to you as well, as you've listened to the sermon, and maybe as you've listened to a few of these services over the last few weeks and months, maybe you think, well, actually... I would like to take this further. I, I would like to find out a little bit more about the Christian faith. I, I wonder whether that's something for me. Well, if you'd like to do that, if you'd like to explore things a little bit more, then again, please drop me an email, uh, same email address, and we would love to hear from you, and we would love to help you. We can we can explore things uh, online. Uh, that's, that's quite easy to do, or, or, or meet up, or whatever it is. But if you feel you'd like to explore things a little bit further, then... Just, just drop me a line and uh, 
we'll see where we go with it. But anyway, we're drawing to the end of our service this morning. And so we are going to sing our closing hymn. together with the words of the blessing so now may the peace of god which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of god and of his son jesus christ our lord and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be upon you and remain with you always